Now, now that we've got all that out of the way, Chris, we got uh, we got some news on Wednesday evening. Of course, Brian Kelly left Notre Dame to head to uh, LSU on Monday night, I believe. Now, Notre Dame has acted very quickly. It appears that they are set with Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator that just came over from Cincinnati last year, 35 years old, and it appears he is going to be the next Notre Dame Fighting Irish head football coach. This was kind of shocking to me. What did you take from all this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I think it's a great hire. I do think it's a a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction, but I don't hate it. I don't know that they could have went out into the ethos of college football. They would have gotten people with much better resumes, obviously, much proven records better than Ted Freeman being this first head coaching job ever. But I don't know that they're getting a better coach. I don't know. I know they're not getting a better recruiter. And and I I think this is a a pretty. I think they're going to end up liking this situation. Okay. I I don't know that it's going to be exactly Lincoln Riley. Uh, after Bob Stoops or uh, Ryan Day after uh, after Urban Meyer, but I can see it being very similar to that situation where we have a coach that established a program, that established a way of doing things, and was building something pretty special, and he left for whatever reason. And basically, the the, the young coordinators underneath him are just going to continue to do what they were doing. Yes, yes. Tommy Reese is staying. He's the offensive coordinator. Uh, The offensive line and defensive line coaches uh, have also committed to staying at Notre Dame. Uh, I just, I I thought that typically what Notre Dame does in these situations, well, and of course they haven't had to do it in, what, 12 years, I believe it is. They seem like the kind of football program that takes a step back and doesn't overreact to a coach leaving. Of course, they haven't had a coach leave for another job since, what, 1907, I believe it was. I, you you take a step back and you don't do anything uh, based on emotion, right? You take a look at all the different factors, all the different guys that are out there, and you don't make a rash decision just based on early signing day, etc. I, I don't know that they made this based on early signing day. I do wonder if part of this is they talk to the guys that are already there, uh, the coordinators and the, the position coaches, and they all wanted to stick around and, and keep doing what they're doing. And they just went with the guy that has the uh, the highest upside that's a little bit older. Tommy Reese is still in his 20s. Uh, so Marcus Freeman being 35 years old and, and having experience at different places because Tommy Reese came in as a grad assistant, I believe, at Notre Dame. He played at Notre Dame. He's just been there. I, I wonder if maybe this was very quickly, okay, Brian Kelly bailed on us, but we're going to keep this thing going. And Jack Swarbrick and... Everybody at Notre Dame decided, you know what, this is the best uh, best path for us. Obviously, I doubt you're going to have to pay, you know, hand over fist to to be able to retain Marcus Freeman and those guys. But, you know, they're still going to get a nice little pay bump. And I, it just surprised me that they didn't, they didn't do their uh, due diligence, right? Uh, but maybe they have. Maybe they've known this was the guy for a long time, right? Well, I mean, I'll tell you this. They, they've got a top five recruiting class projected for this year. and. And those guys aren't jumping ship, it doesn't seem. And it seems as if those guys were being recruited by Reese and 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 Freeman anyway. So, you know, if you keep that recruiting class together, what what would you want? What could you need? And you're right, they're not. Surely these guys aren't going to be making absorbent amounts of money compared to what if you put a full surfing together. And, and you did a national surge and you, you went out to try to get, you know, a top tier guy, you know, worst case scenario, if this doesn't work out in two or three years, you, you got out pretty cheap. They're not going to be awful. I think these guys are going to be pretty good, you know, and, and then you, and then you could move on if you're not happy with the results. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the way that I see this. It is. It's let's take a chance on a young guy and keep this staff intact that we already know can be successful and continue what we're doing because we, we like the trajectory that we're on right now. So very, uh, very surprising, but also I I don't know that it was necessarily a bad move. Time will obviously tell with, uh, with young coaches like Marcus Freeman, but he is incredibly well-regarded. I will certainly say that. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.